Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Time Lord Cosmo and we are getting into Agony Succubus mode. So this is uh, supposedly more uh, graphic than the original mode, so we're gonna go and see because I actually have not played this mode. So here we go. Enjoy. And now I get the items that I missed when I was through here with the King in the But I hear there's different stories. Ah! 
go. Bend myself. Gods don't make mistakes. How can this be? How could I, of all people, be condemned to such a place? I was doing the work of a god, sending heretics to their graves. Priests said that all would be forgiven, that I could be rewarded with paradise for my unwavering conviction. I close my eyes and pray that this is all just a terrible nightmare. But the more I try, the more the screams of the condemned pierce my mind. This has to be a mistake. It ha must be. No, the gods don't make mistakes. Where did all go wrong? I suspect that my downward spiral began when I was tasked to lead the invasion of the heretic's home island of Morlay. There I led the Empire's Fifth Legion in what would be hoped would be our last holy cleansing campaign. As we approached the island, we lost a few ships in turbulent waters. We lost a few more on the heretic's catapults. When we finally hit the beach, our first goal was to capture the giant colossal coastal city. Before our boots had even left the sand, we were pinned down by heretic archers. They had taken up positions along the city's stone walls. We were pinned down for hours, taking heavy casualties, until we finally managed to get one of our ghosts that in position. The crew managed to make a sizable hole, so we rushed in before they were able to close the gap. After that, our swordsmen quickly overwhelmed the enemy garrison, and the heretics soon retreated. Those who did not escape were rounded up and executed either by hanging or archer squad. After the vicious battle, we decided to use the coastal city as a command post for the Legion. High Command hypothesized that we would be able to secure the island in a mere six months. Unfortunately, Command underestimated the monumental size of the island. Additionally, the vast m mountainous terrain greatly favored the defenders. Within six months, we gained no ground outside the city walls. Due to our prolonged campaign, I took the position of military governor and named my two sons, Vincent and Maxwell, my lieutenants. I named Sir Walker as my executioner, and I named Sir Curtis quartermaster. As governor, I had my soldiers enslave the populace and sent them down to the mines. I had men, women, and children who work, worked around the clock day and night. I gave them little more than stale bread and water while they slept in the dirt, packed together like cockroaches. Their emancipated bodies endured horrendous conditions. They were covered in dirt and grime and constantly choking on the toxic dust. I had them punished for the slightest offense. Whipping, amputation, skinning, boiling, and castration were among some of the most horrendous, and my men and I carried them out without mercy. As time went on, many of my men became overwhelmed by their own sexual urges.
They began to rape and violate the enslaved populace, men, women, and children alike. I even witnessed my own son, Vincent, violating a heretic woman. He had cut off her hands and feet so she could resist. She couldn't resist his wrath. Her brutal torture and horrific stream, screams went on for days until she was finally granted the release of death. I do not know if she succumbed to infection or if she died at my son's hand. Nevertheless, I th knew that I ha could have stopped Vincent and the rest of my men at any time. Scriptures strictly forbid it being intimate with a heretic of any kind. But I turned a blind eye and said to myself, they're just filthy savage heretics. They deserve no better. A year and a half later, we were still locked in stalemate with their heretic army, and the city's population had dwindled severely. We burned piles of starving and mutilated bodies every day. I'll never forget that rotten, rubbery, charred smell of burning flesh. Soon I received a letter from High Command. They were fed up with the stalemate and demanded that I make a push. Although the size of my legion had shrunk from 5,000 to about 3,600 men, I knew the punishment for insubordination. So I devised a plan immediately. I knew that I had to break through the heavily fortified mountain pass just outside the city walls. To do this, I took a group of 2,000 men, and I split them into three groups. Vincent and Maxwell would secure the mountains overlooking the pass. Then they would notify me via smoke signal, thus giving us the all-clear to charge down the middle. The day of the battle, I was sure my pet plan would succeed. I anxiously listened to the sounds of distant battle for what seemed like an eternity. Finally, I saw the two smoke signals that I gave the order to charge in a bomb bomb bombastic voice. Leading my union to battle, I could taste victory in the lips of my tongue, on the tip of my tongue, and what started as a dream became a nightmare. I soon noticed that the heretics were swooping down from us from both sides of the pass, and an equally large unit was charging at us from the front. It was a trap. Before long, we were sandwiched between three massive heretic units. There was no escape. My men were dropping like flies, pools of blood soaked in the green fields, and limbs and organs were strewn about the battlefield. My left leg was smashed by a mace, leaving me crippled and incapacitated. The only reason that my life was spared that day was due to the rest reserve units. Their heroic charge bought us enough time to escape. We returned to the city beaten and battered with less than a thousand men. I went back to my quarters in the Capitol building, knowing that neither of my sons had returned. I feared the worst, but the doctor insisted that I rest. He gave me a sedative, and I drifted off to sleep. The next morning, I awoke to the sound of marching, a march so powerful that it shook the very ground I stood on. I rushed to look out the window and beheld the heretic army like no other. At least 10,000 men and women and men marched toward the city, carrying my son's heads on pikes, parading them around like flags. I was beyond disbelief, paralyzed with fear, unable to move. Curtis and Walker rushed into my quarters, pleading that I give the order to retreat. But I ignored their cries and ordered them to fight to the last man. And so they did, without question. The remainder of my men valiantly fought to defend the city, but alas, their struggle was in vain. Soon, the sounds of battle faded and were replaced by agonizing, blood-curling screams of dying men. Suddenly, the door to my chambers was smashed open and was dragged from my chambers by two heretics. I didn't resist. I knew all was lost. As they dragged me through the streets, I saw what had become of my men. Curtis had his stomach sliced open, leaving his organs exposed. Many of my men, including Walker, were impaled on large wooden spikes that appeared to enter through the rectal cavity and exited throughout their backs. Truly a hor horrible way to die. The two heretics dragged me to the city's market square and dropped me there. I was completely surrounded when a heretic matriarch approached me. She was an Amazon, strong and tall, much over six feet. She placed a sword in front of me. I apparently, apparently she wanted to duel, so I drew the sword and raided myself. She chose to fight with her bare hands, but I still didn't feel very confident about my chances. At least I would get to die with, with some dignity, I thought. I could see the hate and fury in her eyes. It was obvious that she knew of my crimes against her people. She wanted revenge. She wanted retribution. I tried to catch her off guard by charging, but she quickly dodged my attack. She then kicked my ankle and brought me to my knees. I tried to pierce her chest, but she grabbed both my wrists and quickly overpowered me. She broke my right arm with minimal effort, and I dropped the sword as I writhed in pain. As I fell on my back, she straddled me and pummeled my face with her massive fists. 
I felt my nose break, my eye sockets crack, and I lost several teeth. At this point, all I could taste was a puddle of blood in my mouth. To finish me off, she grabbed me by the throat, lifted me into the air. Her hands wrapped easily around my neck, and I choked and gagged as she crushed my windpipe. My face began to go numb, and my leg lungs burned. My body started to convulse and twitch, and my tongue protruded from my mouth, struggling in vain to absorb a hint of air. In my final seconds, she pulled me close to her face, looked me in the eyes. Die, she whispered as my neck cracked me too. Then darkness. Through the darkness, I saw a faint light, and with each passing second, I found myself drawing closer and closer to it. Soon, I found myself enveloped in the warm light, floating above the clouds. This is it, I thought. This is my just reward for my devotion to the gods. Then suddenly, all my hopes were dashed as I began a rapid descent toward the red storm clouds and the rivers of blood. I landed in a cavern made of flesh and bone next to other condemned souls of the underworld. I now spent my eternity avoiding traps, demonic vixens, and inescapable misery. My will is starting to break. I don't think I can will last much longer. To my sons, Maxwell and Vincent, and all my loyal soldiers, if you happen upon this letter, know that I am sorry. Please forgive me for leading us down such a vile path. Perhaps eternity isn't as long as it seems. Sir Jeremiah Rapp. Rapp? Rapp? Bapp? I don't fucking know. Well, that was quite a story. three hearts, so maybe I can go back out and put them in that area. And open the door. I guess that's not how that works this time.
Leviathans, Leviathans, their jaws shattered, their guts torn from their bodies, their wings ripped off, were spread out to the horizon when the beast arrived in the wasteland. An unbridled monster, full of fury and hatred, a demon of many heads and a tail as long as a snake. The earth cracked under his steps, and the most horrible creatures knelt in his shadow. In the his shadow? There is no more powerful being in all of hell. But in spite of that, the cunning god has managed to make that hideous creature eat out of their hand. It is said that he wasn't born, but created out of the shadow of sin and depravity, a manifestation of the masculine element of madness and brutality. His vicious nature and animal instinct constantly pushed him to the coolest acts of destruction. Now, however, only to satisfy the sick demands of the great goddess, who would be able to withstand his powerful lines? Oh yeah, I know who they're talking about there. There's the main ma maze of madness. Wait, already? Good. I don't have to worry about those things either. Stuff that I missed the first time through. Thank <laughs> you. 
wasn't done in there.
Okay, it comes out the same spot. Sweet. Sweet. Time to move on. Aha, I can pick them up. Sweet. Oh, this is just awesome. Now I can actually go and assemble that that statue and get what's behind in the secret secret area. Myself. I can get to areas I don't need, I, I, I haven't been able to get to before. This is awesome! That doesn't mean I can't kill, so I can kill these like a fucking play. Butt cheeks, you have saggy butt cheeks.
can't seem to find that. The one letter that I did have, I did the wrong thing. Oh, well, I'll this one. Don't you dare. The gates of hell lie in ruins the moment the Red Goddess set foot inside the abyss. With her, desire, faith, and brutality were born, shaping the appearance of hell's corridors. At least one time they welcomed enormous beasts from the darkest reaches of hell. Today, however, they have been transformed into the image of the goddess. Thousands of corpses rot in the abyss, a monument to her cruelty. Powerful constructions of innards, hair, and bones spread out to their horizon, to the very house of the goddess. Labyrinths, labyrinths of the mind in which demons play with martyrs. Bottomless pits and towers whose tissues breathe in the collective consciences of rotting flesh. The hierarchy of demons ceased to be important. The madmen were removed from the prisons. The dungeons flooded with caustic blood and the forest gushed in violet, all to satisfy the whims of the goddess. Her priestesses torture our minds and the beasts, cut and maim us to glory of the goddess, often making us just as wild and submissive as the most brutal of demons. Let's see what actually comes out. Maybe I will kill it. Yep, there's spiders. Check out right back.
these are all areas I've been in, so I'm just checking to see if uh, any of these areas had anything I could not get before. Oh, that's a close off here. To get this now too. That's a bitch, ain't it? Thank <laughs> you. 
you there. You actually got through. Okay, well that's not good. What the hell happened? Okay, I have to be right back. This is my game meditation. Come on down here and fight you, bitch. Don't make those butt cheeks jiggle, 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 jiggle.
Once again, I think it was that angel. That angel did something. Whenever I try to click on her, it just, I, I don't know what it does, but I think it just, for some reason, disables my ability to pick shit up. going through this again.
here. Even through our memories have been taken, even though our memories have been taken away, we remember her face. From the very beginning, the seductive voice of the goddess spoke to us in our nightmares, making sure that we never forget her. Why is it that we remember our lives, yet the fragments of vivid memories are shrouded by our image? Have we met her yet? And if so, can we trust the blind feeling that pushes us in her direction? Hell of a jump there.
gotcha. That's why I, that's why I missed from when Nimrod came through. Nice if I could actually crouch down and move faster.
this. Well, you know, there's golden chambers I couldn't really get into because I didn't, I didn't go in there as Nimrod. Whatever. Yes, I found the secret chamber before. I already got the stuff out of here.
really? That was supposed to be high enough. Can't get through there to get the pain.
god.
didn't think I was allowed to pick up torches. allow us to pick up uh, torches in order to help uh, clear out the fucking brush and ramble.
I still have no idea how to get in there. 